Some breaking news just coming in this morning. British Prime Minister Boris Johnson has now tested positive for coronavirus. He just shared the news on Twitter this morning saying over the last 24 hours he developed mild symptoms. Johnson, who is 55 years old, is now self-isolating but says he'll continue to lead the government's response in fighting the pandemic. So expect more on that throughout the day. Meme. King 5 is committed to bringing you the facts on the coronavirus outbreak here in our area and across the U.S. So here's a look at the latest numbers. According to Johns Hopkins University this morning, there are now more than 85,000 coronavirus cases here in the country. That's more than any other country in the world. In Washington state, we have more than 3,000 cases with 147 deaths. More than 43,000 people have tested negative for the virus in our state. Here's a live look at Washington, D.C., where today lawmakers will be scrambling to get back to Capitol Hill. Some are driving overnight after word that the $2 trillion plan, including checks for Americans, may be in jeopardy. Tracy Potts is near Washington this morning with the late breaking news. $2 trillion on the line this morning. It could be one vote, one vote, one grandstander maybe. You might have one grandstander. One member of Congress, Republican Thomas Massey of Kentucky, hinting he'll call for a recorded vote on the coronavirus rescue, forcing at least 216 lawmakers back to Washington to vote in person. Michigan's Fred Upton tweets, I'm driving back to D.C. to help get this thing over the finish line. Arizona's Ruben Gallego, I am jumping on the red eye tonight. Dean Phillips of Minnesota calls it a principled but terribly misguided stunt that'll cost taxpayers $200,000. We have members who are quarantined. We have members who have challenges with uh, airlines that are getting their flights canceled. At stake, $1,200 checks for Americans and billions for unemployment, hospitals, businesses, and state and local governments. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi says she's confident it will pass today. We expect to have a, a voice vote on it, but if we don't, we'll be prepared for whatever it is. Scrambling to save the economy and Americans running out of cash. Now, that bill they're trying to pass includes money for extended unemployment. Just this week, there were 3.2 million claims, a record, and twice what the government was expecting. Tracy Potts, NBC News. The federal stimulus package could mean more money for workers who don't qualify for unemployment, but there are still efforts underway statewide that could be coming too. We know that under the $2 trillion stimulus bill, there would be some sort of assistance program for gig workers, freelancers, and independent contractors, and would give benefits to those who don't qualify for traditional benefits. Think of musicians, hairdressers, or even software engineers. Senator Karen Kaiser out of Des Moines says if Congress enacts a disaster Unemployment Assistance Program, or DUA, that's something that's already used after disasters like hurricanes. This could mean getting money faster to people and giving some relief to individual states. She's hoping people who have lost their jobs can hold on just a little longer until more details are understood. My hope is that we'll have this resolved by the end of the week, this week. Uh, whether the program can be up and running by next week is a good question. I think if it is the DUA approach, it will be much faster than if it's a new federal bureaucracy created by Congress in this agreement. And I just don't know myself. We have inquiries into our congressional delegation. They say they're working on it, but it's very, very complicated right now. Senator Kaiser says so far it looks like she will be pressing our congressional delegation to work on getting that DUA program enacted. She says it's easy to set up rather than enacting a whole new bureaucracy and the federal government pays for it. All this comes as we get a look at some staggering numbers. In just one week, unemployment claims in Washington jumped 843 percent. We talked with a former server, Rebecca Simmons. Like so many others, she is struggling to get help after losing her job this month. She tried to sign up for unemployment benefits but has had trouble getting her claim approved. It is frustrating, especially when, you know, I have no income coming in now, and I was working. Unemployment claims from people working in accommodation and food services jumped more than 1,000% in the past week. We do have a resource available for you. You can text the word JOBS to 206-448-4545, and we'll text you a list of companies that are hiring right now. Jake? 
Mimi, let's take a live look outside in Seattle at CenturyLink Field, uh, a track that usually would be uh, full of Sounders fans or Seahawks, maybe the Mariners down the street, but there's new talk they may need to use the field for a makeshift hospital for a quarantine site. King 5's Amy Moreno learning more about this this morning. Good morning, Amy. Good morning. Yeah, this started with Lieutenant General Tom Sampsonite from the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. He was on Rachel Maddow's talk show last night uh, talking about how the Corps can get involved in helping states. And she asked how states go about getting that help. And, you know, here's what he had to say. So that's a governor's call to figure those sites out. And once those uh, those calls come back in, then we'll be able to do it. We're in right now. Uh, Seattle Seahawks Stadium is the next big one we're looking to design to be able to put hospitals back in there around the underneath part of that stadium. So we tried to confirm that information. The governor's office referred us to the military, and the mil Washington Military Department said no site has been confirmed yet. Now, Seattle Mayor Ginny Durkin tweeted yesterday, the city has worked tirelessly, but they need federal help. And she said city staff has been working to secure a site so they can get a military field hospital set up quickly. Now, you might remember they've been working to increase hospital capacity and quarantine sites around the county. Uh, you might remember this site in Shoreline where they converted a soccer field into a temporary site, constructing a building in just a few days. In that interview, the Army Corps of Engineers said they can build something like that at CenturyLink uh, through FEMA or the state can do it. Now, yesterday at a Pentagon briefing, military leaders said an advanced team actually arrived here in Seattle on Wednesday. They've been conducting site surveys at both CenturyLink and also at a state fairgrounds. 300 soldiers from Fort Carson are heading this way to help with emergency and routine medical work. They're going to try and take some of the strain off local medical uh, doctors, nurses, medical workers who have been working so hard to fight this pandemic. We're live this morning in Seattle. Amy Marino, King 5 News. Yeah, they sure have. Amy, thank you. Interesting stuff. Well, today, medical professionals from Fort Carson, Colorado, will be deploying to our region for backup. They will be supporting doctors and medical staff here at our local hospitals so our staff can focus more on people who may have been exposed to coronavirus. This is all a part of a national plan to help fight and slow the spread of coronavirus. There's also some hope this morning, a sign of hope as we officially begin day two of Washington's stay home order. Governor Inslee says the infection rate from coronavirus appears to be slowing compared to other states. Remember, the federal government said we've been about two weeks ahead of everybody else. That purple line there, that's Washington state. As you can see, our curve is trending a little flatter than most. The governor says restrictions seem to be working. This order may need to be extended. And the reason is, is we simply cannot allow this virus to be slowed, but then spring back upon us. We've got to pound it and we've got to pound it till it's done. Inslee says the only way we are able to get back to normal is by beating the virus so we don't need to go through this every single year. One community is taking a new approach to slowing the spread. They're actually using people's names to determine when they're able to shop at local stores. King 5's Kayla Lafferty shows us not everyone is on board with it. The Lake Stevens mayor is following Governor Inslee's stay at home order, but with a twist. People are assigned days to go out and run errands based on the first letter of their last name. So here's how it works. If your last name begins with an A like Adams through the letter M like Miller, you're assigned to take care of essential activities on even days. That would mean the A through M group goes out on March 26th, 28th, 30th, and so on. Everyone else, N through Z, goes out on odd days. Mayor Brett Gailey says his idea is to limit the number of people out at one time, and the reaction around town is mixed. I think it's a great idea. I mean, because if you're not really supposed to go anywhere anyway, it, it really shouldn't affect you. I, I see that kind of a thing uh, in really dire situation where, you know, we're, we're in a depression and people are shooting each other and everything else trying to get stuff so I don't know I it doesn't right now it doesn't seem like it's uh, that good of an idea. Mayor Gailey signed an emergency order outlining the name assignments but says there's no way for the city to enforce it. He says as of right now it's a suggestion that he hopes his residents will follow. In Lake Stevens, Cable Lafferty, King 5 News.